This is Matador News. Good afternoon and welcome to Matador News. I am William Ruiz. And I am Janelle Marie Rodriguez. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed Congress this morning. Netanyahu voices opposition to the Obama administration's attempts to strike a deal with Iran over its nuclear program. The Prime Minister argued that the deal would essentially leave Iran's nuclear program intact and, would, and it would take Iran less than a year to build an atomic weapon. Netanyahu warned Congress that the deal would put the world in danger and that countries must come together to stop Iran. We must all stand together to stop Iran's march of conquest, subjugation, and terror. The ongoing negotiations with, the, with Iran involve the U.S., Britain, France, Germany, Russia, and China. Last night, President Obama said that the ongoing talks would require that Iran agree to a 10-year deal. The deal would limit Iran's nuclear efforts, provide for strict international inspe inspections, and reduce its stockpile of enriched uranium. A Somali-American terrorist who is on the FBI's most wanted terror list has been arrested. 29-year-old Liban Mohammed was wanted by the FBI for allegedly providing material support to terrorists. He was found while traveling in an area controlled by terrorists in southern Somalia. He was once a cab driver in Virginia. Mohammed is now being held and interrogated by Somali officials. He was born in Somalia and is, in, and is a naturalized U.S. citizen. Demonstrators showed up in downtown L.A. To today to protest the fatal police shooting of a homeless man over the weekend. The protesters were critical of how the police department handled the situation. The LAPD addressed the media yesterday at a news conference. During the uh, attempt to detain him, the, uh, this individual resisted our officers. They, uh, they struggled with him. They tried to tase him a couple times. The LAPD says the man reached for an officer's holstered pistol, prompting police to open fire. A source says an officer is heard saying he's got my gun multiple times. Authorities have not released the name of the victim, but other Skid Row residents know him as Africa coroner officials say he was 39. Election polls are open in Los Angeles. At stake are seats on the city council and the school board. Voters will also decide whether to approve two charter amendments. They would shift mun municipal elections from odd to even years, uh, so that way they can coincide with state and national elections. The polls will close at 8 tonight. The engineer involved in the train crash last week in Oxnard has died. 62-year-old Glenn Steele was hospitalized in Oxnard after the crash and his heart stopped twice while, beating, while being treated. He was then transferred to Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles for specialized treatment. An autopsy is pending to determine the exact cause of his death. A high school teacher in Placentia has committed suicide. The teacher, Jillian Jacobson, was 31 years old. She taught photography. Students from her classroom and another teacher found her body. Students have posted tributes on social media saying she was a beautiful soul and will be greatly missed. Crisis counselors will be on campus all week. The Secret Service has arrested three men for entering the White House grounds illegally. The three were arrested over the past two days in separate incidents. One man allegedly snuck in a gate behind a construction worker. The other two men climbed over the outer perimeter stone wall. All of the men were captured before entering the White House. Thieves stole nearly $5 million worth of gold from an armored vehicle in North Carolina. The vehicle was traveling from Miami to Massachusetts. It had a mechanical problem when it pulled over. Three armed men approached the vehicle. The thieves tied the security guards to the ground and stole the gold as well as some silver. Google's new headquarters has taken architecture to a new level. Its new 3.4 million square feet of office space takes up four pieces of land between the 101 freeway and edge of San Francisco Bay. Google released the plans on Friday without a ceremony. The new building has a series of glass canopies all next to flowing streams and community gardens. The CSUN Sundial has won nine awards from California Media Association. The publication won first place for Best Special Issue. The Sundial staff received eight individual awards, including third place in the Best Headline Portfolio. CSUN Scene Magazine was awarded first place for the Best Magazine page. And here is Frankie with the latest entertainment news. Thank you, Janelle. A Saturday Night Live commercial parody that aired this weekend featured ISIS and has caused outrage. SNL remade a Toyota Camry commercial. The original version features a father driving his daughter to the airport as she departs to join the army. In the SNL parody, Dakota Johnson, star of Fifty Shades of Grey, plays the daughter, and the parody ends with her joining ISIS instead of the army. 
William Shatner is defending himself after missing the funeral of his friend and former Star Trek co-star Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy died at the age of 83 this past Friday. Shatner explained in a series of tweets that he was at a charity event in Florida for the Red Cross. He had agreed to do the event several months ago. That explanation did not satisfy the tabloids and some Trekkie fans. Actress Lupita Nyong'o's pearl-encrusted dress had, may have been found. The Calvin Klein dress, which was an estimated value of $150,000, was found in the same hotel where the dress went missing. An anonymous tip led LA sheriffs to an abandoned bathroom on the second floor of the London Hotel. The dress was found inside of a garment bag underneath the bathroom counter. The sheriff's department is working with the dress owners to find out if it's the real thing. That's it for entertainment. Now back to you, Janelle. A bus in China carrying members on an opera troupe have plunged off a cliff. 20 people were killed and 13 injured. The accident occurred early this morning outside of Beijing. Rescue work is continuing. The cause is under investigation. Officials say road accidents are common in China, especially on remote roads like the one involved in this accident. A dozen homes in Irvine were raided today by federal agents who busted an industry catering to wealthy Chinese women known as maternity tourism. The women traveled to the United States while pregnant and claimed to be tourists. Once here, they give birth and secure U.S. citizenship for their children. The pregnant women are charged about $50,000, which includes lodging, food, and transportation. They are also promised Social Security numbers and U.S. passports for the child. And here is Carlos Ravello with the latest sports news. Thanks, Janelle. Season guard Aaron Sparks has been selected as the Big West Player of the Week. He averaged 20 points in two games this week. The Matters men's basketball team defeated UC Riverside 83-76 on Saturday. The victory ensured the team a spot in the Big West Tournament. Before heading to the tournament, the Matters will end the regular season against Long Beach State this Thursday. The LA Clippers continue to play good basketball without their star power forward Blake Griffin. They defeated the Minnesota Timberwolves 110 to 105. Former 2008 NBA champions Doc Rivers and Kevin Garnett hug before the game. JJ Redick hits a jumper with Austin Rivers assists. Austin Rivers had a solid performance, finds JJ Redick for the jumper. The Clippers guard will be late, would later be ejected from their game after arguing with the referee. Rick Rubio running the break after that the two wolves Rick Rubio who had the triple double would find Chase Budanger on the break he was down by, down by three but it would be it wouldn't be enough Chris Paul would close out the game with this jumper over Kevin Garnett the game would finish 110 to 105 the Clippers have won seven of their last nine games and they will, they will host their, their conference rivals, Portland, tomorrow at Staples Center. Michael Jordan has joined the Forbes list of the world's billionaires. The 29th annual list was released yesterday. Bill Gates remains at the top of the list. This year, a record 300 people joined the list, including Michael Jordan. Worldwide, there are more than 118 billionaires. And that's it for the latest, latest in sports. Back to you, William. An Australian skydiver suffered a seizure while skydiving before his instructor saved him. Christopher Jones was halfway through his accelerated freefall training. That means he can jump alone with one qualified instructor. At around 9,000 feet, Jones turned over on his back and began spinning. Jones, who reportedly had epilepsy, was having a seizure midair. After spending 30 seconds unconscious and, and in freefall, Jones' instructor managed to deploy his parachute. Jones regained consciousness at 3,000 feet just in time to make a safe landing. A new portrait of former President Bill Clinton includes a shadow relating to the Monica Lewinsky scandal that occurred in the late 90s. The shadow was made by a blue dress that was on a mannequin while the painter, Nelson Shanks, was creating the portrait. Shanks said that the dress represents the Clinton Lewinsky scandal. He also says that the Clintons are unhappy with the portrait and they've asked the National Portrait Gallery to remove it. Hail covered the sand in Huntington Beach yesterday. Meteorologists say hail occurs every year or two in Southern California, but usually inland and rarely touches the beach. A nice treat for SoCal residents after having one of the warmest Februarys on record. 
We will not have any more rain this week. It's currently in the low 60s in the valley. Temperatures will increase to the mid-70s during the next few days. We will have beautiful weather on the weekend with temperatures reading the low 80s. Thank you for watching. I am William. And I am Janelle Marie. I am Frankie. And I'm Carlos Ravello. Have a wonderful rest of your day.